Jackie Jarris here to explain. We heard of one of it, Illinois, just a couple months ago. Yeah. Well, and two weeks ago, we did our piece in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, and I think that kind of surprised a lot of people. But today we're talking about the New Madrid Fault Zone in the mid-southern U.S. And it's repeatedly produced a series of major earthquakes there. And there's up to a 40% chance that another big one will occur just in the next 50 years. Now, the major difference is that when the last big ones hit in 1811 and 1812, the area was sparsely populated. Today, a major quake in this business and distribution hub could have global economic impact. This is Real Foot Lake, Tennessee. We're in the far northwest corner of the state of Tennessee. And Geologist like Phyllis Deckel describes how this landscape was forever changed by the New Madrid earthquakes nearly 200 years ago. This part of the uh, area around here was downdropped during the earthquake. It actually sank and part of the river was affected by the change in local part of the uh, area around here was downdropped during the earthquake. It actually sank and part of the river was affected by the change in local elevation. It was so powerful it forced the Mississippi River to flow backwards and filled the lake. Real Foot Lake is just one of the stops on Steckel's Earthquake Insight field trip that she leads for the USGS to help business executives plan for the big one. You know, uh, I live, when I'm in St. Louis, pretty close to the New Madrid fault line. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's up north from where the, most of it is, but it's still there. FEMA has purchased 140 million meals ready to eat. What's going on there, James? I, I was baffled by that. I, I sell emergency food on my webpage, and, and I, I'm very tuned to the emergency food industry and MREs and freeze-dried food, dehydrated food, all of that. By the way, I, 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 I need to get you in touch with our eFoods Direct people. Um, they, they'd love to talk with you. So oh, we'll, okay. do, we'll do that at another time, but go ahead. Sure. Uh, and so anyway, I, I am very familiar with, familiar with disaster, disaster recovery, uh, death toll numbers. Uh, I learned when I was in, visiting Los Alamos back in the 80s how... They, the government actually makes death toll calculations, everything from, from natural disasters to nuclear bombs. This thing from FEMA made absolutely no sense at all. Okay, let's take a look at this. We're talking about the New Madrid Fault near St. Louis. Okay, if that thing... Which is huge. Major earthquake, yeah, it, it would, they're talking from Texas to Florida and Ohio to Louisiana and all of those states in a big circle, you know, hundreds, uh, a thousand miles around the New Madrid Fault area. Uh, I made an estimate 120 million people live in that area. They're claiming a survival rate of only 7 million people. And I thought, well, how could in Miami and Texas and all the cities in Texas and, you know, uh, in an earthquake, not that many people die from the earthquake um, unless you know, percentage-wise. Right. Most of the people survive. So That's right. out of 120 million people, how did they come up with this number of 7 million surviving? Yeah, 113 million die? How did, how's that going to happen? Uh, yeah, it didn't make any sense. Okay, so let's look at the food order, the RFP that they put out for 140 million meals. That's enough for 7 million people for 10 days. What are they going to do after 10 days? <laughs> That's a pretty short time. Then you're on your own, right? Then you're on, I mean, this didn't make any sense according to what they were claiming would happen. Uh, so the, the numbers just, to me, in eight different ways. Uh, There's got to be another plan. Any sense. You're not going yeah, to not gonna have 113 million people die from a New Madrid earthquake. I mean, it's it's no. big, it's tragic, but but it's not going to destroy Texas, Florida, Missouri, you know, Tennessee all at one time. It's, that's not going to happen. It's, it's going to hit a line, and that's going to be devastating, but you're not going to get 113 people die. If they're thinking about that, they're thinking about something else, aren't they? This could be a warning for everybody that lives on the east coast of the United States. This is something that does not be talked about that much, so I'm going to present the information to you right now. Everybody knows about the west coast, um, fault line or the New Madrid fault line. We all know about the um, San Andreas and like I said before, the New Madrid. But how many of you are actually aware of that is a such thing as an East Coast fault line? I'm not kidding you. There is a such thing as an East Coast fault line, but you don't hear that much about it. 
You don't see much documentaries about this. This fault line actually runs from Savannah, Georgia. It cuts right through the Piedmont section of North Carolina and Virginia, runs right through um, Washington, D.C., on through Maryland, and parts of um, Delaware, on through New Jersey, passing by uh, the city of New York. I'm not kidding you about this. This is a fault line that exists there. And this fault line, you know, is actually connected with the pneumatic fault line. And people need to be aware of this. The prospect of an East Coast earthquake is far more likely in some cases than a West Coast earthquake. I'm going to say that again. If all eyes are on the West Coast, I can assure you that at some point in the near future, the East Coast will suffer a major earthquake. Now, everybody who's in certain cities within uh, North Carolina to be aware of this. These cities may range from, um, I would say anywhere from um, Emporia, Virginia. I'm, I'm naming little towns right now. Emporia, Virginia, Ronald Rapids, North Carolina, um, Rocky Mount, North Carolina, on down to Raleigh, North Carolina, to Fayetteville and Charlotte. All of these cities either are sit at or on this fault line. And this fault line, like I said before, is connected with the New Matter fault line. Now, everybody know when the New Matter fault line had its earthquake not too long ago, the shockwaves were felt as far away as Georgia. Now, if this were to happen again, it's going to actually set off um, quakes along this fault line, which can induce a massive um, jolt that could be felt all the way up the east coast of the United States. And such towns I just mentioned before will be affected by this jolt. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know about this fault line, please do what you can to get informed about it and make whatever preparations you can before this event happens.